Hello and welcome to the Carbitrage Podcast, episode 250. I'm Eric Berger, joined as always by my co-host Ryan Sinitsky. Hello. Hey, that's me. Uh, welcome, Hi welcome back, us, and hello, everybody. Yes, we should be back. Yeah. More or less. For well, it's still summertime, but Back to the 50s is in two weeks, which it is. we will skip next week, and unfortunately, Correct. because Back to the 50s. I think we yeah we did the calendar thing and like uh, we're past re- the bulk of it. But. So this is the thing though is for some reason this year. Yeah. Our recording weekend is yeah. the same weekend as every important car show. Yep. Yeah, I think last year was a little more staggered. But yeah, because la- last year we did it the other weekend. So it was like yeah. the second Tuesday and then like the last Tuesday, which like, or not Tuesday, the last, second Saturday and last Saturday. Now yeah. we're doing the first Saturday and the third Saturday. Which I think usually works pretty well because who cares about Cars and Coffee? When it's not canceled, we'll talk about that. And Cars and Crafts is later in the night, so we can always do this. Exactly, but this is the thing is <clears throat> all the big shows, t- like they tend to happen on the first and third weekend for some reason. Yeah. Just the way things are spaced out. Yeah. So like, yeah, like June's like totally fucked. Like this is the one weekend where we're both available. Cause yep. the, I got... Back to the 50s, and then have Pride immediately after that. Well, like, even... Which is amazing, because those aren't the same weekend, finally. Pride and Back to the 50s? Yes. Are they typically? Yes. Okay. It's so very it's annoying. Back to the 80s and Proving Grounds 1 are always on the exact same Yeah, weekend. and I, I, don't, I don't care about Back to the 80s anymore. I haven't been, so I'm going this year. It's The reason I quit caring so much about it is... Um, Excuse me. There are ways in which they could improve themselves, and they choose not to. Oh, great. Yeah. So they, it's like Intermark. Yes. Except Intermark is just bad marketing. <laughs> well, like a complete lack thereof. I think the marketing I've seen has been like kind of okay, but well, it is... There was the Cars and Coffee that Intermark did last weekend. We should just talk about this. Yeah, yeah. we're going to talk about this real quick before we talk... Well, let's talk about beer. We have hams. We do indeed. Vintage cams. cams. Actually, yeah. Okay, there's an entire process I'm forgetting about here. So, yeah, thank you, Ryan, for bringing the beer. And that's, yeah, it's like a vintage style can that they're putting yes. out as a special edition. I like this much more than the vintage edition, like Nordies, they've been putting out. I'm not a huge fan of that vintage label. I'm very happy for this because this is going to be in the back of the Buick for back to the 50s, and this style of can fits. Back to the Buick. I really like that. Because uh, <laughs> it's going to be in the back of the Buick with a vintage cooler nice. from the 60s. I is got. it made out of metal? Yes. Good. It's metal with a very poor quality plastic inner liner. Oh, it also but accepts Bakelite, yeah. Yeah. And then there's and then there's metal inside of it. So it's metal with like a plastic liner that you're supposed to be able to lift out to like drain. Okay. But that plastic liner is like totally broken in like multiple places. But whatever. It was like shocking. It was like twenty bucks in the state sale and it's like from the sixties. So I was gonna say, if it's got the aesthetic, that's all yeah, you Yeah, it's really got need. the aesthetic, it's gonna have the right cans, it's yep. been the right car. That's very all nice. that makes sense. But yeah, no, Intermark was a couple weeks ago, and that's their main show in Osseo, which is usually pretty excellent. But I think you told me the day before that that was happening. And I'm yes. like, oh, okay. Yes. And I tried to find the event on social media, and I could not. Could not. Nope. And it, yeah, and to your point, their Cars and Coffee event that they held, I think, a day I, later. A keg and case. Yeah, which that is was a there. great venue. The only reason I knew that was ever happening is I happened to see a flyer stapled to a light pole. At, at Car Intermark. At Intermark. <laughs> and I was like, huh. Is this from last year? You always have to look. I like, looked. I, it, the only reason I noticed that is Jana had a tattoo cons- consultation like two hours after the show. Okay. She tried to be very, very clever and schedule it at the same time as the show. She didn't know the show ended at 3. So I ended up at, having Goodness. to sit there until like 4.45. Just twiddling my thumbs. As one does. Yeah, because it's like Osseo is <clears> like <throat> exactly far away enough that way. Like, it's like driving out here then back to... Yeah, it doesn't make sense to do it, yeah, that twice in a day. Yeah, it's stupid. Like, you just hang out there. Even in an EV, when I have to do a round trip here twice in a it's day, I'm like, this is stupid. It's the amount of time it takes. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah seriously. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. No, two, yeah, 100%. I, I don't have two hours just to waste on that round trip second time. So, But, but yeah, the Keck and Case Cars and Coffee. And then, all right, so I saw a solitary flyer, so I had no online presence about it. Right. And then as I was leaving the Cars and Coffee, because I, just want, I happened to want to get a coffee, and I'm like... Five watts there. Okay, I'll check it out. And there was one Jensen Healy, two Vespas, a Fiat 124. An older one, right? Yeah. Yeah, first gen. The one I don't like. <laughs> and a Deshavo. But I'd already seen the Deshavo yesterday, the day before, so I was just like, who cares? I think you and Dan Balto sent me a picture of the show at like, the same time. Yeah, it was depressing. 
<laughs> and, and then in MN Fiat, the Facebook group, which there's like 20 members of maybe, and yeah. nobody active, Intermark posted. In that in one there. group. It's, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> like, what the hell? I, I don't I, know. I, they posted in the last hour of the show because nobody was yeah. there. And then I like... I didn't, I didn't even see that till after I saw their, like, post, the official Intermark post saying, hey, there's a Cars and Coffee happening today. And I saw it, and it was at 11 o'clock. And I'm like, I just left the show. I just got home. I, I sat know. down at my computer to, like, go play War Thunder. And I, like, I happened to check, like, Facebook as War Thunder was loading. And that was what I saw. And I'm yeah. pretty sure it's because Facebook noticed that my location was in the same spot as the show that just happened. It's just trying to feed you relevant data. And I'm just like... Oh my god! This is I message I sent for that to Dan. I said, "This is very curious messaging because generally you try to market before, before the show, event. yeah, not after." <laughs> and then the comments on that MN Fiat thing, they were like, "Oh, it's going to be every other Sunday moving forward." I, I was thinking in my head, like, "Great, but make the events." Like, it doesn't take a genius to make an ongoing, like, a, a recurring not, yeah, event. Yeah, I'm not going to remember that. No, I'm not either. Like, is there one today? Was there one today? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I did, you know, I I tried to look, but there very well could have been. I had no idea. If you type Intermark into Facebook, you just, you get you get nothing. Yeah, the Facebook group's hard enough to find. It the is. The page is impossible to and find. And it's all events from 2021 or prior. Yeah, I googled Intermark, uh, Osseo. Oh my God. And it brought up uh, an event flyer from 2019. <laughs> the d- <laughs> so anyway, Intermark. I actually really like Intermark. Yeah. I have a great time with their show, but, but like, like, they really need to market. Did Dan did actually talk to them about trying to take over some of those roles? Y- yeah. But, I mean, it's also Dan. He's got so many things on his board. Yeah, he's got a lot of irons on the fire, like, especially I, now the current re- communities. I really think that Intermark could, like, just go on Fiverr. What is that? It's just a, it's a online, like, marketplace for, okay. like, for just, like, people are trying to do gig work for, like, designing stuff. Okay. And I'm like, you probably go on Fiverr and say, hey, five bucks, I need a recurring Facebook event pay group. Like, event, yeah. like, happening. Yeah. Like, Same. I'll give you the pictures. I'll give you the dates and times. That's exactly what you do. It's just somebody just makes it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Y- yes, those absolutely do exist. I'm like, hell, I'm sure you can find an attendee that likes the show that would be willing to help them with that. I... Too. If they'd asked me like three years ago, I probably would have said yes, but totally not now. Yeah, I, no, I don't know. No, I've okay. got more than enough shit on my plate. That's why we haven't done this in two months. Yeah. Because yep. it's just been like well, between I mean, your schedule and mine, and it's just it's been a nightmare. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's been schedules. I mean, an unusually busy spring summer. Yes. Like, I, I've never had so many. I mean, it's been like family events for me. It yeah, no, you've had everything shows. happening. Yeah. yeah, like I just got back from up north, and like I have. Thank you for meeting me early today. My, yeah, my parents. You found out that you had a thing as yeah. well. It was and, on yeah. my calendar, which is great, but it was three and a half hours, at, you know, earlier than yeah. it was no, supposed I'm, to I'm be. V- I'm very happy that um, that I'm not working twelve hours, uh, two days a week, and ten hours out of three days a week. Oh, good. That kind of sucked. Yeah, no, a lot. Uh, that's yeah. not that caused like a whole mental maintain. health crisis. No shit. Yeah, don't do that. No. Um, yeah, I can barely do it. And it's like, <laughs> so. and like the reason I was doing that is like because I have to like make up income for Jana because she like you know makes a fraction of what her already very small income was. Right. And so I'm like, okay, well I guess I'm just gonna live off savings until Jana gets a job like right the fuck now. Yeah, but that's not sustainable. Nope. None As it of turns this out, right? Been, yeah. None of this has been sustainable for the last year, and so it's just been it, it finally just came to a head. Yep. Yeah. As and it I does. Just, I just needed like a month to like. <laughs> Just get my shit together. <laughs> nice. And just do nothing. It well, was great. I am all for doing nothing. And yeah, it felt really nice to take a little bit of a break, but this is this is still fun. Yeah, so no, it, it's, back at it. yeah no, this is fun. It was just like, it, it, it's like, when I say like a break, it's not just like a break from like work things or anything, but it's like literally a break from social events from just like leaving my house. Yeah. And it's just one of those things like, so there's this like, and like, like mental health care, this thing called spoon theory, where you have a like... You have, you know, like, your drawer full, like, silverware. Yeah. You only have, like, so many spoons that you can use. Sure. And each task takes up a spoon. And so, say you have, like, 12 spoons in a day. Sure. When waking up and getting out of bed, that's one spoon. Going to bed is another spoon, so that's two spoons, so you're down to ten. Then working, say, that's five spoons. Every extra hour after you're supposed to get off, take one out of three spoons. Sure. And then you're suddenly, immediately out of spoons. 
For the day, right? For the day, and then and you can't run your dishwasher. No, and I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't have time to run the dishwasher because dishwasher is two spoons in of itself. I was gonna say that yeah. is at least a spoon in and of yeah. itself. I so imagine. that's what spoon theory is. And like when you overload yourself, like literally, you just need to take days where it's just like you know what I'm doing nothing to like replenish spoons, and that's why I just need a month of just buying fresh Sounds spoons. Like your days are how I treat the year in car culture in Minnesota. Because yeah. like, without winter, I would never be able to be in the car culture here. I um have realized the fewer car shows I go to, the happier I am. Huh. Yeah. Because I realize that most of the people that I'm around at car shows, I don't like. Interesting. There's like a handful of people that I genuinely enjoy being around. And so that's why I go to like two or three shows now. Well, and it's really nice to curate too, though. Because if you're only yeah. going to two or three shows, they're usually really good. Yeah, because it's like, I don't want to like, I don't want to go to like, Cars and cameras under 94, where it's just be like some bunch of chargers like oh. doing donuts and like oh. one okay MR2 shows up. Gotta talk about Mopars and car shows. It's yeah. been a while since we recorded. Um, I guess why don't we move up our talk about um, cars and coffee Sounds in good. Edina because that was a trip. So yeah, MNCNC, which is not an official, yeah, it's not an officially licensed cars and coffee, but event. Actually, actually, it is. A cars ampersand coffee trademarked event. But it is not a cars A N D coffee Correct. event. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, what most people are familiar with in the rest of the country, I believe, are cars A N D coffee. Yes, and they're they're effectively the same event because cars right. ampersand coffee um, was a ripoff of cars and coffee. Correct. Yep. So, but they couldn't get the. There yeah. was a lot of infighting. If you, if you go back there. to when we were uh, Motor Trend, not Motor Trend. <laughs> Motor cult. <laughs> Chasing Camisa. Yeah. <laughs> when we were motor cult, we had Tyler on, and he yep. was just a fucking chud the whole time through. I hate that guy. But anyway. <laughs> I mean, it, it. we got through it. I, yeah, I, I really liked the fact that we were able, because we had, like, I don't want to say both sides of, like, the, the car show hosting community, because we had... We had Drive Cartel. Yes, we've had we've had everybody on. We've had everybody yeah. on, and, and like it's, it's it'd be nice to do follow ups to some of these folks. But I don't, I don't really need you to talk kinda... to. Speaking of like how I just said I don't go to that many car shows because yeah. most people I don't want to talk to. Like Tyler, Tyler is firmly in that group, and I'm okay saying that because like I'm pretty sure he's aware of how I feel. Yeah, and the yeah. events have gotten from my perspective quite a bit worse. Oh, since they're we significantly were worse. Motor cult too, but yeah. Anyway, the cars ampersand coffee that we have up here MNC ampersand C moved. So many times in venues yeah, since yeah. they got kicked out of where we are here because in Shanghai. They, they, they keep getting kicked out of places because. Correct, because it's not a very well run event. It's not a well run event. And there's a. When you are hosting an event, yeah. your personality is a very large part of that. Mm-hmm. And if you have a personality in which people don't really. If you're not that palatable of a person, it's very difficult to maintain a, a venue. Because, yeah. you know, the people that run these venues, they're sticking their neck out for you. And every single time somebody does, like, a burnout or somebody leaves trash on the ground yep. or leaks oil or does literally anything at a car show, that's a huge liability for them. Yep. And, yeah, so, on to cars and I cannot ampersand. even imagine how this group is able to get venues. But somehow... They went from a an accessory lot at our local dog racing track or horse racing track, not dog. Yes. Well, uh, they did do dog at the same time, but oh, I didn't even know that. Yes. That's kind of cool. Actually, fun fact: um, greyhounds like racing. Huh. Oh, actually, I mean, I they, they like actually racing, enjoy that, right? the sport. It's just the way that people were taking care of them for the sport sure. was a problem. Okay. Fun fact. But yeah, no, greyhounds like they loved racing. That was like the worst part about dog racing being illegal is like the dogs were upset. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we've got a per capita. We have the most upset greyhounds. <laughs> yes. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> uh, so they moved. The most recent venue that they were at was an accessory lot at our local horse racing track nothing special about it. Really, they weren't having too many issues with it because it was all on private property. There weren't really good places for people to watch burnouts, so the people in the Mopars weren't doing them as much. Last month, they were able to well, get well, a well, much well, better wait, venue. Wait, wait, wait a second. Sure. They were... They, bef- between the horse racing venue yeah. and last month, they moved to um, Mystic Lake. No, Mystic was before that. No, yeah. they, they did... Dog racing track or horse racing track, Mystic back to horse racing track, then here. 
because they were at yeah. Mystic. Yep, they, that's right. Yeah, they bookended Mystic with the horse racing track, but the Mystic didn't want them there. Right. Because no, once Chan has yeah. an autoplex, the main lot at Canterbury, then yes. Mystic, then to the accessory lot yes. at Canterbury, and now to Southdale. Yes, that. Yes. Um, but anyway, Southdale Mall is in a very hoity-toity it is city. The most nimby place I've ever <sighs> been to in my life. It is very close to where we went to high school. It, it is in <laughs> where we went to high school, in fact. Um, so to like get a description of how nimby Edina is. Um, Which is the name of the city, by the way. Yes, Edina. That's where, that's where South Hill is. <laughs> I would, I could probably say yeah. per capita and per dollar of average income, yeah. it is more nimby than Bel Air. Wow. I've never been to Bel Air, so I will Bel- take your Bel- word Air, Bel Air make, makes Beverly Hills look like middle class. Ah, it makes Beverly Hills look like Echo Park. <laughs> your facial expression really <laughs> sold it like, to me. So. Bel Air, so, that, that's where Fresh Prince took place. Oh, I, I yeah. understand. So, um, yo, home, smell you later. Yeah. So, like, Bel Air is e- exceptionally nimby. Okay. Like, it is like that. It, it that I would say is actually like. It just I face value the most nimby place on earth. But then if you think of the fact that people in Edina make about one one hundredth what people in Bel Air make. Sure. And they're equally as nimby. <laughs> it's just like it's even I more need a nimby counter. It's even more annoyingly <laughs> nimby. And nimby is not in my backyard. Yeah. So that that's just a term I've for heard that. like fifteen nimbies and I've yes. never heard it before. 10 seconds ago. Yes. <laughs> um, but I understand immediately what yeah, it means that, without any means, definition. Yeah, not in my backyard. <laughs> um, it is the most nimby place in the world. And it's like, it's, it is worse than it should be. Like, it should be, oh, yeah. it should be annoying. Like, it, right. it should be like Eden Prairie annoying. But like, Edina is, I've actually known people who have gotten HOA fines because they planted the wrong topiary in their front yard. <laughs> I'm not at all surprised to hear this. That's literally, and, and it, it, that isn't in like where the mansions are in Edina. That's like over by Cornelia Elementary, These where it's like middle class houses. Take yeah. themselves very seriously. Yeah, it's really bad. <sighs> so anyway, yeah, this event where Mopars do burnouts got accepted all the time, and all every, the e- time everybody is smoking weed the entire show. <laughs> Like it, it's it, it, inordinate amount of marijuana is smoked on this at this show. I have no idea who wakes up at like seven o'clock in the morning, drives from wherever the hell they live to like not where they live. Yeah, which is at least a half hour drive, and then they just like wake up and blaze it. I just, what the hell? <laughs> and I mean, this venue was much closer to civilization than any that they've had ever in this state. That is true. Yes. So I'm, I don't know if that turned the demographic at all. It was a particularly nice day outside. It was also seen to mile weekend, so everybody's ready for every car show. Yeah. True. Everyone was driving like a complete bell end that day. But and, yeah. I was hearing from Tom, my next door neighbor down here, like, he lives in South Minneapolis, but it's right on the border Edina of Light. Edina. It's and, called that's called Edina Light, actually. But Rhonda, his wife, is in the next door, and that's in a geographic location. And she was oh, seeing. Oh man! All, she was looking how at next that, door. How was that next door? Oh, it was bad. <laughs> Every Karen was calling I the cops. Should I, I should absolutely be on the Edina next door? Yes. that sounds wild. Like I'm on next door, but I need to like redo my location. Like I, yeah, I live in uh, <laughs> Dayton, Interlochen. Yeah, yeah. You need to say you live in Interlochen. Yeah. <laughs> right. Interlochen Just, is where all, there's. It is a area of Edina that's bookended by country clubs. Yep. And it's full of mansions, yep. and it's where the, like, this is the worst part of Edina. That's the 0.1% of the Edina people. This is where you'll probably get HOA fees for, like, fasteners on your mailbox. Oh, yeah. Heaven forbid you wear the wrong brand of shoe to the uh, country club. Exactly, yeah. It's really bad. You'll be you'll be languished to a different city. Um, wow, that sounds incredible. Yeah, I was... Um... But today would have been their next show, and there's been nothing said about it. Yeah. Other than the fact that they changed their cover photo to the, it was like a blackout MS Paint box over Southdale, and it said location coming soon. Like, that's all we got. So you know it was real bad. Oh, it was super bad. I was telling Dan, I'm like, I kind of wanted to go to the next Dynasty City Council meeting. Oh, my Lord. It that would have been amazing. It would have been incredible. It would have been the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. It, I, there would have been a line out the door. <laughs> the hairstyles. 
Oh, just, mm. every mm. lopsided bottle of blonde hair haircut. <laughs> it would have been so bad. And all of the crossovers in the parking lot. Yeah. Oh man, oh, that would have been, been so many salt life stickers. Oh. <laughs> But anyway, not only did Mopars probably ruin Car- M and C ampersand C, they also ruined sort of Cars and Crafts. Yes, they did. It was a bad weekend. Single to my weekend was bad for Mopars. Yep. Yep. So yeah. I mean, the, luckily they, they, I think Draft Cartel handled it pretty well. Yeah, they because did. they were worried about their relationship with their host venue, which is St. Paul Brewing, essentially with yes. the you know eleven wells. But. I, I haven't heard from the guys yet, but I think they were able to get a police officer to agree to like be on the site during and this. Well, the thing is, is they had police officers that were on the road. Yeah. But like, I mean, there's a there's kind of a shortage in that field, especially in St. Paul. I think it's, right I now, think it's so. ironic that they had issues with police officers <laughs> when the police station, the East District. St. Paul Police Department police, like, police, like, precinct is the next building over. Yep. It's not, like, down the block. Yep. It is literally, like, you go on their back patio and you huck a beer can as hard as you can over the wall, <laughs> you're going to hit a police car. Like, that's what's going to happen. Yep. That's how close you are but to the police But there aren't any department. cops in the police cars. So. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. But, but um, anyway, yeah, there was a, a second-gen LX Charger V8 that, like, spun around in the street doing dumb stuff lost he control was, hit a parked car what he was trying to do was he was doing a trying to do a rolling burnout uh, and when he let off the brakes the uh, rear end got wiggly and he let off the gas or he let off the gas and then tried counter steering we should and, petition Stellantis to TSB every single ZF8 speed auto rear wheel drive Mopar to not allow the transmission to upshift when there's any brake being pressed because I think, I think the main issue is the wheel speed on those cars getting too incredibly high i think you issues just have not defeatable trash control that would also work just turn it off because yep. half the time they don't turn off the trash control and they just understeer everywhere <laughs> <laughs> when a 4800 pound car with 400 horsepower but what? well back to so back to cars and coffee mm-hmm. um on top of the cars doing burnouts yeah there's a huge issue with a bunch of like soccer moms and like mall walkers yeah. not being able to get to the their starbucks or whatever no tr- not trying to get to the rustica bakery to get their coffee okay. and they couldn't go walk in the mall and they couldn't park near the gym because that's what everybody wants to do in the morning. I was going to say it was right by I don't know lifetime, wasn't it? Why on earth they didn't just put it next to the like movie theater? That would have made sense. Is that on the other side? Yeah, it's on the opposite side of the mall. Okay. That's where nothing is open until like noon. That's good. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, the interior why space probably you... wasn't even open. Well, I, 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 I genuinely think this is like engineered to fail. Like there's somebody that was working at South that was like, no, I really don't like these guys. And he just got overruled. And he's just like, all right, fine. Well, we're going to make sure this happens only once. <laughs> and we're going to put this in the worst possible place in the entire mall. And we're going to put this in the northwest corner of the mall. Yeah. Where the only like, five things people ever go to is, is open immediately. But I didn't know there was a rustica there, but I think it yeah, was right in front there. of a lifetime. So, yeah, yeah. that's where the, a the angry a life- rich yeah. people that can't get their coffee and they can't do their fake workout in the morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're done. Yeah, yeah, you're done. You're done. And so there's that. And. Yeah, there's there there were some cool things like there was that uh, that Corvette ramp side was there, so there was awesome. a uh, Turbo Two, a Renault Turbo Two that was there that showed up after I was there. Yes, that's why you don't leave things until they're done because you you want to watch a shit show at the end. No, I don't. And if it's cars and if it's cars and coffee, you do. Um, but anyway, well, I guess so, I know that now. Yeah, um, but anyway, so I mean, yeah, everybody's leaving. This guy, this Miata, this turbocharged Miata, is an absolute shit pile, and it. Broke down, and he was trying to get oh, it restarted, no. No, no. and it kept rolling backwards. And there's this guy with this like S2000 with like a, I think it was like a charge speed front, like front end on it. Like, okay. It was a nice front end on it, and the guy with the S2000 is like, he can't go anywhere because there's like a bro truck immediately behind him. Oh no! Miata is just <laughs> getting behind him, and I oh no! Grab, I like I run out there, I push the Miata forward, and I'm like, okay. This is your first time with a manual, I see. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to take the heel of your right foot and you're going to put that on the brake pedal. Yep. You're going to take the toes of your right foot, hold it sideways, and hold your gas down. Up to like 3,000 RPM. And then push down your clutch, and that's how you're going to start it. Yep. Because otherwise, 
you're not going to be able to afford to have this car anymore. So you can't afford this bumper you're about to have. <laughs> Which is worth more than your entire vehicle by a factor of at oh, least yeah. three. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. no, that Miata was worth absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are two kinds of turbo Miata. There's like, uh, what's, uh, Fly Miata. Yeah, there's like a really good, well integrated. You could almost warranty the swap or turbo. Even, yeah, no, or there's eBay. Yeah, this was like, yeah, this is like Alibaba. No, uh, even worse this than is eBay. like used eBay turbo. Great. Yeah, it was not good. charge piping. Sort of fits. Uh, the the piping wasn't the issue. Is the fact that he totally did not have it tuned. Oh, stock yeah. ECU beauty. Because yeah. yeah, when he when he started it, it ran like absolute balls. It's just Shocking. a bad vehicle. Just don't have the AFM in it. Probably. I didn't see his hood was shut. <laughs> But, oh, it had a hood on it. I'm actually impressed. Yeah, no, don't worry. It had the winking headlight. It was uh, probably because one of the headlights was broken. Yeah, well, all of the electrical harness in front of the engine has been burned. Yeah, by the... By the molten oil. Yeah, slung been, out of the turbo. Yes, yep. exactly. Exactly. But anyway, I'm excited for Cars and Crafts tonight. Hopefully, yes. everything I'm sure is it'll okay. Be yeah. it, they, they do a remarkable job, given the size of the venue and the popularity of that show. Yeah, I'm I going think, a little earlier this week, because holy I always shit. Go, I always go first thing. I always show up at like. Did you go an hour early, or do you go half hour? Early? I show up usually around six fifteen ish, and then I usually get a parking spot. So it starts shows at seven. At seven? Okay, yeah. so forty five minutes. I show up about forty five minutes early, and then I just hang out. It's not, it's not like I dislike the people there. No, no, yeah. I just I just don't want to like be the guy that's too early. I just don't know when people start showing up. I mean, you're. It's okay to be too. They they show up and start setting up at like three. Oh, okay, yeah. So Hopefully. don't worry. There'll, there'll be somebody there. I guess I'll have to wrench the LSB out of the garage. LSB? But I blew up three. Oh, yeah, so then it's like blue. Yes. I drove the Peugeot last time because I uh, don't trust cars at uh, my house during soccer games. Oh, oh God. After the <laughs> Accord had been stolen twice. Um, you I'm know like, what goes great with the soccer game? Stealing and vandalizing a Honda. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, like, the Peugeot, I'm like, God, if somebody, like, if some drunk chud just like backs into this like darren's fucked forever yep um by the way the car made it back to seattle i saw that it lost fifth and reverse but it made it there very slowly oh don't worry he found a transmission immediately i'm actually kind of impressed that was very incredible was it like too low on oil no idea interesting i'd be curious to see when that gets pulled apart yeah i have no idea uh i mean i don't think it's pulled apart (laughs) oh Who cares? It's okay. just, it, well. it, it broke, and now, now it's getting a new one, and it'll be fine. So the $1,000 505 made it All the way, back. yeah. All the way back, yeah. You just couldn't, like, back up. And he's like, that's probably, like, a metaphor or something. I just can't look back. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't keep moving Putting forward. it in reverse is a white flag of defeat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you so, can't be doing that anymore, friends. Yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's quite incredible that I mean, the reverse went out, like, as soon as he left this, the state. And I, mean, I, I told him, I'm like, you, I want you to take this car as soon as possible because I don't trust having the i don't want this because like there will be something that breaks and if it breaks well i have the car it's my problem if it breaks yep. when you have the car it's your problem exactly and so like literally i drove it to like mcdonald's like once a week to make sure that the brake rotors like didn't rust because those are not impo- those are not possible to find ah yes because and- they're, they're four by 140 oh good lord and they're not interchangeable supers <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, you're done. There's like it's just yeah, you're totally done. There's no option. See ya. Yeah. So Good luck. I made sure to like drive like once a week to like, make sure like the brakes didn't like rust over. So did he drive it to Intermark or did you? He drove it to Intermark. Okay, I drove right. the Fiat. Yeah, because I had to drive Colin, uh, that dude that hangs out around uh, uptown, takes photos and stuff. Have I met him? I don't know. Maybe not. He's a, he's about yay high. He's no. bald. Nope. Okay. Yeah, no, he's he's cool, dude. Cool, but uh, mint. Yeah, so I know I ended up driving Colin, and he had a blast because like he's his like he's on the spectrum, and his whole um, like special interest is like taking photos of cars, and he actually takes like the most incredible rolling shots of cars because he just hangs nice. out in uptown, and he takes photos of cars in traffic as they drive by, and so he's got like he's become very good at adjusting all the settings like on the fly because you have to account for the speed of the vehicle and how far away it is and all those things are changing the size of the vehicle what time of day yeah exactly yeah. and he gets all that perfect and he sees nice. like incredible rolling shots of just like random crap of just like chevy lumina driving by oh yeah but it's like driving like 45 miles an hour and everything's perfectly blurred and it looks like it's at le mans it does. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Look at the bug spatter. And that's, yeah, that's no, like, racing right so there. The, like when I say like, it's perfectly in focus, like you'll see the like the spider web cracks in the corner light. Like <laughs> perfectly. There's no blurring on the car itself, but the background's perfectly blurred. And he doesn't like do any pro any post processing at all. I mean that's honestly but it's just like going to a car show. You're not looking at the stuff that everyone wants you to look at. You're looking at the weird off-the-wall crap yeah. that somebody just happened to bring. So Colin was, like, over the moon when he saw, like, Borg or Isabella's and, like, weird stuff at oh, Newmark. Yeah. So, yeah, he's very excited for Did that. Did you watch any of the valve cover racing? I thought that was awesome. No, I was in the middle of... Uh, I was looking... What was I doing when that was happening? I think I was under looking under the hood of that Cummins-powered Rolls-Royce. That's totally fair. Yeah, and then there's also that Alfa Romeo 8C. That was very good. That purple one? The one that came in a little bit late, pre-war. Uh, yeah. It had an inline 8. <clears throat> it was a dual red cam and twin supercharged. And I walked past it. Yes, it was very, very, very good. It was the coolest engine I've ever seen. Yeah, I walked straight to that gold, like, urethane-bodied French front-wheel drive thing. Uh, the Citroen Mahari. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that that uh, alpha was very, very, very cool. Like that's like, I I understand that alpha makes Duesenberg's like boring. That it's cool, but like I very had, I had no interest in looking. Very at it. exciting. Very cool. That's the kind of stuff I walk past when we were doing the uh, the Hawk Vintage and they go to downtown or whatever to do the roll in. Mm, no, it, have, you're no you're missing you're missing out on like it, this is the thing <laughs> is I try to look at cars where I'm normally wouldn't be interested in this how I got into pre-war cars because I find weird stuff that interests me on them. Yeah. Oh, there's plenty of that. Yeah, and, like, and so that's how, like, that, that's how I discovered, like, pre-war cars because there's just, like, always something interesting that I've never seen before on those cars. You can't just buy that from Bosch. you got to yeah, make it. Yeah, and, like, the whole point of Intermark is seeing, like, <sighs> weird shit that you don't see every day. I just, I really love it for the French selection. Yeah, and the French selection's great, but there's, like... I didn't see Michael this year. I, I saw his car, so I think he was yeah, there, but I didn't find him. But, yeah, there's, uh, we, we saw him. But um, it doesn't seem like we were coming in. He was going. Sure. But uh, there was a pretty nice E500 there. Yes, there was. I saw that. That was a really nice car. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, there's some other like really cool stuff that was like floating around there. Did you see that like mustard seed yellow Jensen Healy? Yeah. That was very a very very good. A like, couple of those cars yellow. were yeah. There's there's two of them. There's one that's a little bit darker that's like a super duper rare color. It does not exist. I wouldn't know that. And then there's one where it's like seventies yellow and yeah. everybody has a seventies yellow Jensen <laughs> Healy. But then there's the one that's slightly darker that okay. nobody bought. And I it was gotcha. The slightly darker one, which is like a way cooler color. Um Yes, it's yellow, but it's not the yellow. But yeah, no, it was it was very cool. It was a good good time for car shows. Hell yeah. Hell Let's yeah. move on to a couple of stories sure. here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I don't think we're going to be able to get through all of them. That's fine. We, we can push them into the other one. That's okay. Yeah. Um, I want to start out with uh, flathead engines. And since we were talking about pre-war previously, I'll talk about some more pre-war. And Frenzel superchargers, which were a thing in the 50s, are back. Oh, God. Why? Because they're a very cool supercharger for flatheads. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Yeah. Oh, is it the ones that have the uh, the multiple V-belts? It's the one where it's like the big disc on top of the engine. Yeah, those yes. are neat. That's a friend's <clears throat> And there's a company that's, they're remaking old ones. They're remanufacturing old ones, and they're working on actually building new ones. Oh, that's a friend's little supercharger. Sweet. That's a very, very, very cool supercharger. Why is it not oriented the right way? What do you mean? Uh, isn't the, the actual blower casing supposed to be perpendicular to the ground or uh, parallel with the ground that's the intake manifold right underneath yes it. but the belt that drives that blower goes yeah. straight and then you just have the fans that come off of the the tube from the belt the shaft from the belt yeah and so that is actually the easiest way to do it well i'm sure having... it's, this is it's way n- more it's efficient, not it's not clearly. a root style Right, I know it's a centrifugal, yeah. but yeah, it's a centrifugal, but it's uh, yeah, it, that's how it fits on an engine. And the, you can see it. You but the, the old ones were it rotated the blower ninety degrees. They used bevel. That gears. was a different one. Oh, actually, okay. Frenzel did not have a uh, bevel gear, but this is a really cool engine. Now it's that's like, a photo right there. Yeah, it's got mm, like a gold flathead with a. 
blower on it. And oh, yeah. twin Stromberg 92s. It's very cool. Oh, yeah. And it's... But that thing makes the wettest 200 horsepower. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's very cool. I'm, I'm here for it. I, I want to see more Frenzel superchargers, and maybe one day when I make a million dollars, I can finally get my Ardent Head oh, my Frenzel God. supercharged flathead. I want to see what, like billet technology could do without changing like any of the hard points or dimensions of a three main flathead and like see how much power you could make with one of those is there's there have been a few people who have been trying to do it but it's like terribly expensive and like none of the none of the projects as far as i can tell have gone anywhere i but think you can make like 500 horsepower with one a couple of times there's um I, actually there's a guy in minnesota i was him dick something I can't remember of course time. it is <laughs> A Richard. His last name starts with an R, I think. But um, Dick Richard. No, but he um, he made the world's fastest flathead dragster, oh, and it Jesus. was like 560 horsepower, and it ran like a nine-second quarter mile. I don't know how you can do that with three mains. I just don't. Yeah, it was very cool, but it was 560 horsepower. Oh my like, Atlanta! Yeah. I mean, the, oh my, you okay? That had to have been overhead converted because like. Mm. It was not with Arden heads. That was the L head. How hot would these get? Try. I, th- I think you get one good run. <laughs> to be like honest. you would need supercharging and turbocharging to like try to scavenge all that shit out of the <laughs> know, right? out of the cylinder. No idea how he did it, <laughs> but he did it. Oh, the heat! I'm just thinking about the heat. Not even the poor bearings on that thing. Um, speaking of um, of supercharging and stuff, if you look at this belt system that's going on here, I love how the belt's laid out in this gold engine. Yeah. It's just a diamond shape. It's just a rhombus. You don't need any sort of wrap on a water pump. <laughs> yeah, it's really amazing. <laughs> I wonder how you adjust it. That's actually got a pretty late distributor on it. Single dizzy. Yeah, if you're doing it, something like this and you're not running the twin magnetos, like you, you're just doing it wrong. It's it's very, the twin mags look so the cool. The twin mags look really cool. But it's just it's a cool engine. Like all things considered, it's just rad. I like that the mount on this thing, you can see it on the engine and on the uh, like the the cutaway. It's yeah. just like a giant set screw on the back. You can just take the belts off and lift it right off the top. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yep. Right. You probably have to take the fuel lines off too, but <laughs> well, maybe not. You can just lift it over, put it on the windscreen. Probably okay. <laughs> you could probably do it without taking the fuel lines off. I think. But oh my. God. That's I I never ever want to like hypothetically go back in time, but if I did, the first thing I would do is just go like find and see what they're doing in flatheads at the time. Yes, that that'd be exactly what I would do as well. <laughs> I'm like, well, there's no internet. I guess I'll but, go see if I can get a blown flathead. Yeah, this company is from Australia. Oh, um, of course they are. Yeah, Australia is a weird place in the world because um, Australia is very good at making the best of the worst american engine technology the brits are decent at it too well all right so this is what i'm saying it's like they have the frenzel supercharger thing going on there's yeah. also a small block ford intake manifold i think it's called like the um the super velocity or something like the double velocity or something but anyway <laughs> this it's this like old 70s design it had a really cool name it looks really cool and it's objectively an awful intake oh okay i thought you were gonna say it was like the best the, intake no ever the for worst a it's so bad but it looks cool <laughs> and so these guys in australia like the company like bought out the original company's rights to it sure. and they started making new ones oh, and they no. but what they did is they just made them with like modern technology they still suck okay but they're a hell of a lot better than they used to be i and picture they, like this cast iron like equal length looking thing kind of that yeah <laughs> it's really not good and it's kind of it's like it's got this, like, weird, like, webbing inside the manifold to try to equally distribute, like, airflow to all the cylinders. I see, that went well. It, it all it did was restrict everything. <laughs> it was just it, it was just not a good design. But it looks cool. It looks really cool. <laughs> I was just hoping it had a really cool name. Cause no, it, really it, do, it does have a very cool name. I cannot remember. It was on Engine Masters. But it was, oh, man. It, it had a cool name. That's all I can tell you. I just can't remember what that name is. I'm bummed. I don't remember seeing that episode, but it was. Uh, it came out, I think, like last week or a week before. Is when they is in their small block Ford uh, intake manifold uh, showdown. I think the last episode I watched was like Gen Three Hemi stuff. It was like comparing the pre-08 and the. 
It was post-game. actually an episode. I think it was like right after that. Okay. Yeah. I just haven't logged in for a while. Now I'm down to one TV in my living room. I don't watch as much Motor Trend, so I gotta fix it. Understandable. That. Yes. Oh, I'm working on it. It's gotta get a second OLED. All right. Speaking of forced induction and Ford. Yes. I'm gonna try to segue this time. So. Back in 2015, when Ford brought us the 2.3 liter four cylinder EcoBoost. Yes, they put the wrong head gaskets they and did. they all blew up. Yeah, well, in, in some applications. They yes. put the rear wheel drive head gaskets in all the transverse front wheel yes. drive applications it and it just problem. melted the cylinder heads. Yeah. Ford is at it again, but not with the same engine. Previously, the very reliable second gen EcoBoost V6, the 2.7. Those are not reliable. The 2.7 are pretty good. No, those have catastrophic timing chain issues, worse than Volkswagen, actually. Way worse than Volkswagen. They're actually, that's the main killer of transit vans, is timing chains really? shooting out. Yeah. I knew the first Gen 3 5 had chain issues. Oh, they have a horrible, like, dumpster fire timing chain Well, issues. anyway, there's a new issue now okay. yeah. that might actually get you done before the timing chain. Oh, so, wow. Seemingly only Incredible. on the Bronco full size. Don't know why. Mm. If you don't order the 2.3, which now apparently is the reliable engine, you can get a... 2.7 EcoBoost Twin Turbo V6 that will start eating its own valve train just like a 3 liter Audi V6. What? What? That bad? Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing. Also, it, this is on a vehicle that came out like six months ago. That's yep. a problem. Oh, there's a lot of them out there. Yep. A lot of people have paid way too much and won't be able to access their, uh, their vehicle. Because, I mean, these are all like the top spec ones, too. Yeah. All the base ones are the manual 2.3s, which are probably fine. Maybe. Yeah, probably. Maybe. Uh, so, uh, I, anyway. I, I honestly, <clears throat> I honestly think Ford is trying to do it at this point. Probably to, like, sell people more EVs because <laughs> they're like, ah, look how bad and unreliable these gasser engines are, right? Wow, I like, can't believe wow. anybody would buy these. But like, I'm just like, dude, the two seven has been around for like five years, and it hasn't had this issue. Wow, hmm. it's like when they put the Pentastar in the w- Jeep Grand Cherokee. And the minivans, and it started dropping valve seats because it was getting hotter. I'm like, That's okay, did nobody strange. ever bother to like put one of these on a dyno and stress test it? It's no. like they're fine in the cars. No, they don't. Oh, well, no. I, well, clearly they didn't. No, uh, that no. But <laughs> companies with like massive R and D budgets that just torture test cars and engines on dynos, how do they not find stuff like this? They don't. The only thing I All can right, think of with this. You think that they're torture testing them? This is the thing. They don't put them in the car. They just have them on the dyno once, and they design the engine. They go, okay, cool, it's good. It didn't fail on the dyno. It's probably fine. Yeah. Great. That's the difference in American and Japanese vehicles. I do think that this is just, like, one bad metallurgy batch. Mm. Just, like, I don't know. Mm, but I don't, I don't believe that. Don't worry. Even if you don't have a failing cylinder head, apparently your timing chain will let go. Yeah, it'll, it'll shit out. Don't so worry. It's going to suck out of the way. you have a full-size Bronco with a 2.7 EcoBoost, go ahead and return it and get the 2.3 yeah, with the manual. Yeah, yourself a 2.3 with the manual. Yep. Yeah, done. Yep. Yep. I mean, Which the, are, the manuals are objectively worse. Yeah, and whatever. Well, I mean, just for power, oh, yeah. for power oh, output, yeah. the tra- the manual transmissions like fail like 200 horsepower sooner than the automatics do. Probably. Um, but I mean, it's a fur Bronco. Who cares? Yeah. Just like, leave it stock. Yeah, leave it stock. Enjoy, just enjoy don't your tune stock. Your Bronco. Cool Bronco. Yeah. <sighs> With a stick, because three pedals is good. So, um, the Bronco's been out for about. Not even 15 months. Right. I was going to say, I think we saw it at the months? last auto show, and it was, it was like pretty new months. at that point. Yeah, it was like 10 so, months. Yep. So I want to talk about a car that's been around for 15 years. That's a Mercedes CLS. They still make that? I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I think they came out in 03 or 04. But uh, it came out in like 06. It was like mm. we, were, we were in high school. We were in high really? school. Yes. Oh. And I thought that they would grow on it at some point, and it just hasn't. And I, I, I'm sure that the roof line, I hate slopey roof lines. That's my least favorite thing. Oh, four. Okay. But I hate slopey roof lines. But I'm not sure if that's the only issue with that car. What else? Is it, am I crazy for hating that car? I really, really hated it when it came out. Okay. Do now, you hate the first gen CLS, I actually, I think it's my favorite Mercedes sedan of that era. Okay. Yeah, um, not my. Because of the rear end, which I hated. Yeah, the rear, I, I just can't. But the headlights, I, I hate. I do share your disdain for companies trying to put coupe roof lines on four-door cars. Yeah, that's like, bad. Like, just stop it. No. Just the, give me a four-door that's a four-door. I have, for, uh, it, it's not just modern. Like, I, I want a Buick for myself that's not Jana's, and I specifically need a flat-top Buick because it's got a better roof line. A flat-top Buick, what does that mean? I mean, yeah, literally like, just a roof that doesn't have any curvature to it? It has a, it, the roof extends beyond with the C-pillar, 
and then it's got a wrap around rear windshield. Okay. So it's got a flatter looking roof line. Is that the rare one? Yeah. Okay. Of course. Uh, but, but. <laughs> I think we in talked 1961 about this with Tom, only. Think of it. In yeah, 1961 only. I know we did. You could get it on the Le Sabre, which was the normal one, because okay. they had a bunch of leftover roofs from Cadillac. That they used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just throw those on there. Well, because everybody was buying the Cadillac Coupe, and they had made too many roofs for the for the uh, four doors, and nobody was buying the four doors then. So they just had all these leftover roofs. They had to give it to Buick, and Buick's like, okay, we'll just put this on a normal car. That will fit. <laughs> yeah, and it's we'll like they fit. used them up. Yeah. All right. But so um, I have put a like a one pixel yeah, photo of the first gen CLS on here. I can't do it. It's it's not just the rear end. Like the rear end, I hate. Like, it's really bad. The body line along the side where it curves. Don't like that very much. I hate much. how it arches. Yeah. I don't like the headlights. It looks like somebody yeah. took a clay model of the new C class oh, and no. left it in front of the window for too long and it melted. Okay, if you put clay in front of a window, doesn't Wait, it just harden? It hardens. It's like they took the clay and they put it on the table outside and the sprinkler is turned on. There you go. There you go. Bam. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, it just looks like a, it's like droopy and melty. It's, I don't like it. It's not good. I mean, I will agree. The front end is not my favorite. You know, the there's going to be some jackass in the world that's got to get Bengal 7 Series on one of these and he's just ass mad that I'm like flaming on all of his favorite cars. He's probably got a an A7. Yeah. What else? No, that's have? too new. That's too new. No, it's a, not. Those have been around for a long time. You'd have a Bengal 7 Series. You'd have one of these. And then, what do you have from Audi? God, there would be some trash that you'd have from Audi. I'm trying to think of, like, older, really like unshapely first gen models. Q7. Like oh, original Q7. Yeah. yeah. You'd have the original Q7, and you'd have the that, and then you'd have a Bengal 7 Series. <sighs> and the guy, you know he would have a hat, a hat for each car. He'd have an Audi hat for his Audi. He'd have a BMW hat for his BMW. And and Mercedes he'd have hat for his old Mercedes. Valve stem seal failure on the 7 Series. He'd have cooked cylinder liners on the CLS 55. Yes. And he'd oh, have don't... timing chain failure oh, and on all the his, Q7. All of his um, valve, uh, his tire valve, little trigger valve covers, yep. they're all the ones with the little company logo on it. And they're like anodized blue or whatever color he gets closest oh to God. the color of his vehicle. Uh, uh, he does just... he have like photo bucket prints of the cars on his yeah, garage wall guaranteed. too? Guaranteed. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Giant flags that you bought, like some like uh, some mall kiosk, <laughs> like your Bentley flag there. Yeah. But you have yep. one for each of his cars, Correct. and it, he's just oh yeah, you'd just be the worst. You have a hot take about everything. It's just the worst sort of person. We're, we're calling you every, out, hypothetical, every, terrible German car guy. Every he's the sort of person that makes me not want to go to car shows because that's why I think when you go to car shows is just that guy. But. <laughs> You can usually avoid that kind of person by go- not going to a certain type of car. Yes. Store. No, they will not be at Cars and Crafts. They'll be at, at Cars and Coffee. Correct. Yes. And they'll, yep. be, they'll go out golfing with their bro. Oh, oh, my God. At a really cut-rate country club. No, it'd be at a public golf course like oh, in St. Okay. Paul. Yeah, it'd All be right. even worse. Yeah. <laughs> but don't worry. They've got their BMWs, so they like they look like... Oh. That's what you do with your BMWs. You take, go out to the country club. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, they have a diagram of how you load the trunk with your yeah. golf bats. Yeah. So, clearly, that is... That's the thing. I'm sure he also probably has like a Jaguar XK8 automatic that needs timing chains done on it. Oh, God. Yeah, the 4.2. <laughs> I didn't like, even realize that a, until recently. It has, has like a clogged catalytic converter. Every light on the dashboard is lit up like a Christmas tree. Just Buying a Jag V8 with a misfire code and it's like buying a 3.2 with a cam crank correlation. You just just run. Bad, bad, run away. Bad time. <laughs> All right. Back to EVs very briefly. Yes. I've got an EV as well. Don't worry. Cool. Good. Actually, I've got two more EV things in this entire episode, it looks like. But the Polestar 2 is getting a little bit of a refresh. Not externally, but a technical. It is. So it's like the Model 3 Fighter, I guess, if you really want to call it that. I think it's a better car. It is a better car, but Um, it is equivalent to a Model 3, yes. Yep. Yeah, so it's a competitor at least. But they are actually slightly upping the power output on it. That's good. They are slightly upping the battery range. Okay. And I think that's all kind of in preparation of the new Polestar 3 that's going to be coming out, which I believe will have a hatch option, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I think that that's well worth uh, talking about just because when the Polestar 2 first came to this market, I guess, it's a global car, but everyone's like, oh, it just doesn't have enough range. I'm like, you have to understand that each individual EV manufacturer has to comply with a certain testing method with the EPA. 
But if they're like Volkswagen or Kia, they do it wrong and they get a better number out of it. So the Model 3 doesn't get anywhere near its EPA range, which is significantly higher than the Polestar 2, but the Polestar 2 pretty much nails its EPA range in real world. So combine that with an actually like 30 mile longer range and another 50 horsepower, this car is getting even more appealing because it looks really good. It has excellent seats. They, they, they need to have another Twilight movie. So you can just have Edward driving one one of these. Like, that would definitely Rene- move taking, a lot of units. Yeah, take like Renesme to like <clears throat> to like daycare. To like that's got to be happening. School. I yeah. mean, with fuel at five dollars a gallon now, I mean that's got to be coming, right? Yeah, exactly. That, I, I, I'm very I, I like Volos. Like Volos are cool. They, they have like a weird era in the 2000s where they sucked a lot, in the 90s where they sucked a whole lot. Um, but they've like. Around when Twilight came out, they started making cool things again. They had the V70R, and they killed that, and they made the C30. Oh, the C30 was interesting, C30 but was it wasn't cool. nearly as cool as well, this it's because they, It's because the they killed the R brand. And I know. They brought the we were all star. mad at the C30 yeah, because of Yeah, everybody's mad about that. And it was Edward Collins' car, which everybody's extra mad about. Like, doubly so if you're a Volvo fan, because Edward was supposed to be driving a 240. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> they did make a full start of the C30, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, yes. and they, that gets so it confusing because not only could you buy a tuned internally Volvo with the Polestar badge on it, you still can as a tuning subsidiary of Volvo, yet it is an entire electric brand based out of China. I'm just like, ah, just Names stop calling your nothing. Nissan a Datsun and just sell us a damn Nissan. Names mean nothing, and let's go take a look at corn. Oh, okay. Speaking of names that mean nothing. Okay, yeah. I assume there's a... Oh, yeah. Uh, Don't a worry. I've, I've got a link. That was my segue. All We're right. going to talk about corn. Right. Don't worry. It's working. It's redirecting to... Oh, my God. Hopefully. I don't it works on my computer. The link does not work for me. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. Yes, it does. Yes. Corn. Ah. New... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the headline also. There's a new Chinese electric car <laughs> named Corn, and it's so damn cute, I want to spit. Yeah, uh, Jason Torshinsky Torsh- made a new oh, website nice. called the Autopian. Um, that is good. I'm like, glad he's still writing. It's, it's all the good people from Jalopnik, Jalopnik, and now Jalopnik's just like nothing at all. <laughs> Can we email Torshinsky and be like, so we have an idea? You want to register the domain Jalopnik? Yeah, that'd be hilarious. I think you should. <laughs> I, think you, I think you should be able to register Chaplopnik and just have it, uh, yes. have it redirected, redirected to the, the Utopian. Utopian. Yeah. Yep. Um, yes. But yeah, corn. no, the car is called Corn. Oh my God. Yep, it's the Chang'an okay, so Lumen Corn. These guys had the Aya Neo, or the, uh, the Kia, Aya Cat, or a Cat. That's the one. Yes. Yeah, that's a really adorable Chinese EV with great specs. That yes. kind of like draws on the styling of Mini Cooper and Fiat but surpasses them in range, practicality, and undercuts them on price. Now you've got the corn, which I don't even know what this competes against, but it kind of looks like it's so shaped like an old... The corn competes with, like, those voitoirettes that you see in France. Not a voiturette. You know, like, the Matra, like, microcars that yes. they have in, Europe, in, like, in, like, in, like, Paris. It goes, like, 35 miles an hour, weighs 880 pounds. That's so tiny. Yeah, it's very small, but so... it's... It's made for like it's like safe and it's affordable and it gets like good enough range, like it's just it's a good it's a good little guy. He's it's ten feet long. I was gonna it's say five is it foot seven. Similar size to the Ami or? Uh, yes, it'd be it's just equivalent to an Ami. Okay. It, uh, it's got two options for engines. One makes forty one horsepower. The other one makes forty eight horsepower. Ooh. Yes. So, it, it it's basically an Ami uh, competitor. Uh, it has a 12.92 kilowatt hour or a 17.65 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, uh, so 17.6 is like what I got on my Fiat 500e. Yeah, so it's like 130 mile range. That's really good. Yeah. I also do like that the brand is Lumen. Yes. L U M I N corn. The yes. Lumen corn. Lumen corn. Yes. <laughs> That's very bright corn. It's a it's a it's a good guy. I this like this car. Sell it's, well in Iowa. It's it's really damn cute. I like this a lot. It's got everything you want. It's got good interior. You know what it is? This is the 21st century Twingo. This is being advertised like a Daihatsu at an auto show, too. I really yeah, like that. It, it reminds me of a Twingo. Like, it's an electric Twingo, basically. Merci, Twingo. It just does Twingo things. Look at that boot opening. What is going on there? It is not good. Is that because of safety? I guess. It must or be. maybe it's to get better visibility out of the wrapper on corner no, windows. No, those, because those are pretty thick. It, it's got poor visibility. Fine. So but I, 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 think, I, think it's, I think it's a safety thing. 
because I think that I saw was outside of China, oh. and I'm okay with that because I want this to be sold but at least in Vietnam. We got to get it under the Chang Li brand. Yeah, it needs to be called the Chang Li Corn. Or no, it's a Chang An. It's not Chang Li. Different company. Uh, I was thinking of the Nemeca. Yeah, that, that's a different brand. Oh, well, I know. This is but... this is the Chang An Lumen Corn. I, Chang An Lumen Corn. Here we go. Yeah, but the car is called a Corn. LFG. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of the Corn. I mean, I, I like that kind of stuff. I mean, this is the one part of the 1980s car stuff that I really enjoyed. It's was like, the, where did you come up with that name? The wacky names. Just, I was going to not only stop writing, but, yeah, the wacky names. Yeah, it was, it's great. Like, the it, 80s and 90s car is, like, they had wacky names. They were just goofy, and they weren't afraid to take chances. And that's exactly what this is. It's not afraid to take chances. It's wacky Which is great, only if we get it. Yeah. So... Uh, Nah, I don't know about that. Nah, nah. <sighs> but, right. I mean, uh, you know my alternate fallback, if everything goes wrong, I'm move to the to the Mekong Delta and open up a hot dog stand. I'm not sure if I've heard about this alternate reality yet. If everything really just goes, like, completely tits up in my life, if everything, like, bad happens, yeah. like, if, like, I lost the house and, like, for some reason Jana wasn't around, like, if she, like, took the house or something and, like, threw me out because she was tired of me, whatever. Um, Where is Lucy? That's really the question yeah, I have. With Jana. Oh. Um, I just moved to the Mekong Delta and opened up a hot dog stand. You should invite me to come uh, visit you, and I really want to see those turbo diesel like long boats with the direct I'm, shaft yes, propeller things. I'm actually, I've found the TikTok for that, and I'm now on Thai boat TikTok. <laughs> that stuff is like the most amazing motorsport yes. I have ever seen. It is seen. so cool. Here, I'll show you this one I saw last night before like I went to bed. They're like diesel Nissan van engines with compound turbos. That's a two-stroke. Yeah. Watch it rip. Because <clears throat> it's a two-stroke single cylinder. But that is also a tiny, very lightweight boat. And it's a very small small, it's a very small person. I just but love that they rev them up and then oh. dunk the prop. Just watch. Oh, okay. That thing. Yeah, that thing eats. It rips. <laughs> <laughs> that but, thing rips. Like I'm, I've added that to my bucket list. When people ask, like, "Oh, where do you want to travel?" I'm like, "I want to go to Vietnam, and I want to watch these turbo diesel river boats." Yeah, I like just that, yeah. Eat. Like Vietnam is like unironically quickly turning into my favorite country. Like I tell people, like I'll say, like Vietnam is my number one place I want to like visit. But like of all countries in the world, Vietnam is very quickly becoming my, my number one favorite because it's like. There's like a huge market for people restoring mopeds there because yeah, like I obviously it. yeah but like um, thick on the ground and, yeah but that's the thing is like if you want like a restored like Honda Super Cub there's a high likelihood it was built in Vietnam I suppose I mean they had to it's not like Cuba extent but like you had to maintain what you had yeah and like, the other thing is like. Like mopeds are such a part of life there yeah. that like everybody has them. So it's like it'd be like restoring a classic American muscle car here. True. If you want a restored classic American muscle car, you buy it in America and you export it to wherever you live. Yep. If you want a restored like '60s moped, like a restored Asian moped, you yeah. go to Vietnam <laughs> because that's where you're gonna find all the good ones. And also a luxury purple suit made yes. out of silk for not much. Dollars. But yeah, no, there's been a few that like have been on like. Branch car, like you look at like some of like, the moped, um, yeah, listings, and you look at like where they were made, like you'll say, like, yeah, this was restored in Vietnam and brought to America. Hell yeah, it's like Vietnam's where you go for mopeds, you go to South America if you want like a sketchy like Nissan Patrol, uh, <laughs> you, like you go to like you go, you go to like you go to Spain. Dubai if you want an old 456 yeah, Ferrari, you, yeah, exactly. You go yeah. to you go to Spain if you want a um Range Rover Santana, like, yeah, or Land Rover Santana, yeah. Just the most obscure thing. The, each country have, has this like <laughs> thing that's good. Yeah, at. Like, no, you're right. You go to not Russia <laughs> if you want a lot of. You go to Ukraine because Russia doesn't deserve to give you a lot of. Don't go. Ukraine to has enough. Go get yourself a lot of from Ukraine if you there want you a lot of. That's you overpay you for it too, for God's sake. Yeah, pay the pay them extra. They need yeah. it. Yeah. So don't lowball them. Upball them. Yeah, upball them. <laughs> They'll be very confused. They'll think it's a scam. <laughs> Remember the motor cult days when we had Scott on and he said he was on the waiting list for the Volkswagen ID7? And the first thing you said was, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't Volkswagen will find a way uh -huh. to screw this up. Yep. So his ID4. <laughs> <laughs> he, he texted me about this. 
And I love it. It is the most absurd. It's like combining Volkswagen screwing up EVs with like burger luck. <laughs> because his ID4 is one of 351 <laughs> units in the entire world that has like a catastrophic safety battery issue <laughs> that will just cause the car to randomly die. And there's no fix for it. That's incredible. So it's Scott so has incredible. started the lemon process for his <laughs> second EV in two years. And yeah, Volkswagen, congratulations on finding a way it, to screw I'm it up. I'm so vindicated. Yep. Oh yeah, no, it's it's recorded. It is. I'm absolutely it's vindicated in yep. this. I, but everyone said yes, you're right <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah. No, this is. I have very, very, very hot takes, and I'm willing to defend them. Yep. <clears throat> because. They come from a place. You like, were working at Good Karma at the time too. Yes, I have like my my hot takes. That if I'm gonna put a hot take on something, I'm going to be able to back it up because yep. I also don't like being wrong. Like oh, yeah. I, I am wrong. I try to be right. Very when I very speak regularly. Up, but yeah, but if, yeah. if I'm gonna like loudly complain about something, I want to at least not not waste people's time because I know how annoying I'm being. And I want to at least try to like yeah. be accurate with my annoyance. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. 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 That, I, I'm in the same boat. Whenever I say something, especially online. Yeah. I want to make sure I, that I, my I information triple, is vetted. I triple. I triple like I Google vetted. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. As I have it typed before I hit enter, I go check again. Yeah. Like when I'm like having arguments with like two A people and stuff, I make sure I like. Wait a minute. I need to. <laughs> That here's my I post my sources <laughs> when I'm having any sort of political debate. I will post my sources. I always put them in my notepad on my computer just in case I have to quit copy paste them back in. Yeah, exactly. They're there. It just depends on if you just get a response. Case, yeah. But like this, okay. So the the recall essentially it's it's a ribbon cable that was poorly soldered inside the battery pack. But this wasn't like 351 sequential ID4s that were built. This was. December 16th, 2020 to December 8th, 2021. So almost an entire year of production. We're only 350. We're soldered wrong. 351. 351, sorry. It, Scott's and number Scott's one. was in there. I'm no, sure Scott's it's car number one. Is, no, his is 351 first. That's okay. 351. Oh, guaranteed. Okay. So guaranteed. Re- <laughs> Absolutely guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> they made his. And then they went, oh, shit. We should probably... We <clears throat> yeah, forgot we, to flip this switch. We got it. <laughs> We fired that robot, but uh, yeah. turns out he squeaked out a last one on a Friday. Yeah, exactly. That was your car. You got a Friday car. But <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's absolutely incredible. Though. It just gets it's more ridiculous the more you you reach into this. Because it's, I don't know. And it, was, it wasn't even a Volkswagen factory problem. It was an LG Chem factory issue. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, again, that's Volkswagen. I, um... <clears throat> I want to tell Scott what would be a good option for an EV. Well, he's going to get an Ionic 5, I'm sure. Well, he's already had problems with them. Yeah, but that's I mean, that, The Ionic 5 looks really good. It's a good I've it's seen several of those now. I'm like, oh, it's pretty good. I was actually going to say that, and then I remembered he had the Konar or the Nero yeah, or whatever. Yeah, the Nero. Which, he, recently, he keeps me updated. Like, he's got his old Reddit thread of when he was starting to tell people, like, this is a problem. Yeah. Like, it's a big one. Everyone's like, no, my car's fine. And now, like, there's a poll at the top, and it's a like, vast majority of people have experienced motor failure or bearing <laughs> issues. <laughs> And That's like hilarious. the de- the people that were defending their vehicles are gone. That's like, very funny. Actually. Yeah, like there's been four revisions now, and they're all still broken. I'm trying to think of something where I would like actually lend my name to as an EV. I mean, a Polestar or, two would be fine, but the range isn't that great. And there's no heat pump. I think that the Polestar would probably be my best. And that's the thing is like adding heat pump onto that like cuts your choices i know yeah it really home. does like you can get i would honestly model say three you can get a, a used i pace which that'd be all right but I no think, credit i think actually yeah or the ionic 5 and just deal with the recall can you not get a ipache with a heat pump now all ipaches have heat pumps but they're expensive hmm. i mean a used one with no tax credit's still like 15 grand more than an ionic 5 it's probably a nicer vehicle, but uh, I would probably say, a, in the name of reliability, JLR product. So, in the name of reliability, if you want a lemon, a thirty V in three years. One second, in the name of reliability, I'd get the Jaguar. And this is the only time in history anybody's ever said that. And this is my reasoning why they're owned by a Chinese company. Okay, and that means if they make something that's poorly, yes, and a state official ends up with it, such as a Jaguar, ah. They will end up 
in a re-education camp, which ah. is not good. Mm, no. No. So I think that the Jag would be the good pick. I honestly think with Scott's luck that he's had with cheap EVs, yep. I would spring an extra 15K. And um, like I know you don't just like spring 15K even it, if you... They're fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think that they should. <laughs> like, I know it's like, and even if you, even if you're doing fine, yep. um, no, springing I, I 15 K is like, it, it, springing 15 K is not like, it's not something to like scoff at. Like, no, it's like, but at the same nice time, like, like, let's look at your current ownership experience by not spending that $15,000. Oh yeah. And you're dealing with your options for non Tesla, non, you are the early adopter heat pump EVs yeah. are the iPache. Yeah, I think the iPache is the best the choice it, because it looks good, it's nice, yeah. it it works, it performs well. I've never it's seen one the, of those lowered, but I bet it looks It, it doesn't good. it doesn't do anything weird. It's like it's a Jaguar, so it's gonna have some sort of like weird cool yeah. Easter eggs in it. Because well, it's got the dumb like super tiny dual infotainment screen. It's every, gonna have, everything's capacitive touch. Every, and it's it's gonna have like when I say like Easter eggs, like Jaguar is amazing at putting weird Easter eggs in every car. So I it, like that's half the fun of owning it is finding what sort of weird stuff they did that nobody talks about. Sure. And like you mean it's quirks and features, right? No, it's <laughs> Easter eggs. It's not really a quirk. A quirk is like a Mitsubishi Mirage where every single door handle is the same part number. That's a quirk. A, a Easter egg is like when you have a tenth generation Honda Civic and you flip over the rubber pad, pad in the center console, yeah. and there's a etching of a first-generation Civic under oh, that. Yeah. That is an Easter egg. And Jaguar's really good about doing that. And not necessarily to Honda's extent where they do that, but like Jaguar will do something where they'll have um, specific models where like the, the, the logo on the grill will be slightly different. Mm -hmm. Or they'll have like a trim level that has different piping on the seats. And they don't advertise it. Huh. And you'll just like open the door and be like, oh, that's, that's weird. That's different. This is an oatmeal interior with coffee piping, which is actually the names of their leathers. And then you're like, yes, it is. That was actually on the Jaguar Super 8 Vandenplau. And you're like, oh, that's really cool. It was only available in 2005 with that No option. wonder that company had to be bailed out so many times. It's such a cool company. <laughs> it's so cool. I love like weird crap like that. As I think, I think Scott would enjoy that a lot. Oh, my God. So I think he should get an he should get an Apache and just be done with it because he keeps going to Korean cars and they're not working for him. Like, well, and Volkswagen, but we knew that was gonna. Y yeah, it's even the, made in Germany. And there's it's nothing. Still... Yeah, nothing. Oh wait, you know what? The battery is made in Korea. LG Chem. Yeah, and also it's made in Germany, which is means that the car is gonna have biodegradable wiring harnesses. Probably. No, by law in Germany, that's why every German car has, has wiring problems since like 1993. When did Mercedes have issues with the wiring harness? I think on the it was SL? 94. 94? Yeah, because it was around that time that... They have improved, though, because I really haven't heard of like other manufacturers having those issues. Volkswagen since. has. Well, yeah, VW, because they use big. tiny wire, and it just well, bakes the coating off of it. Yeah, they, Volkswagen has big problems with it. I've heard of some issues with BMW, not as catastrophic as early Mercedes. But that is an actual thing to consider, and we live in a humid place where things are going to biodegrade faster. So I would very strongly recommend not going with a German EV. I think my cars are going to be fine. At least for 10 years. I would say in 10 years, if we're seeing German EVs not have catastrophic electric, electrical issues, that it's, aren't this. It's going to be just like the current field of German non-EVs. Like, there's going to be some that are okay to buy, and there's going to be a bunch that aren't. Yeah, it's going to be that. We're and just going to have to figure it out. Yeah, and I, right now, uh, Scott's just playing Russian roulette. Well, he's got the 2.0 TEV. Yeah, no, I mean, he's playing Russian roll out with trying to buy a German EV right now, so it's just, he's never going to find something. I mean, he'll do just fine on that. But yeah, he'll, yeah. Be, he'll be okay. I mean, he knows what he's doing. Um, let's uh, let's save the next two topics for uh, yep. next week when I other think people so are listening. Too. I need to get our hams because mine has a hole in it. Yeah, if you don't have them, we'll go to the menu. Don't worry, I have them. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this week. We will see you next week.